Today we're going to be covering lesson 29-1, modeling with a quadratic function. This lesson will be split into four sections, questions 1 and 2, questions 3 through 5, questions 6 to 9, and question 10. Let's start by taking a look at the introduction for questions 1 and 2. Coach Wentworth coaches girls soccer and teaches algebra. Soccer season is starting and she needs to mark the field by chalking, chalking the touch, touch lines and goal lines for the soccer field. Coach Wentworth can mark 320 yards for the total length of all the touch lines and goal lines combined. She would like to mark the field with the largest possible area. Touch lines are the sides. Goal lines are behind the goal. Okay. FIFA, F-I-F-A, regulations require that all soccer fields be rectangular in shape. So that means the lengths have to be the same measure and the widths have to be the same measure. Number one, how is the perimeter of a rectangle determined? How is the area of a rectangle determined? Well, perimeter when dealing with a rectangle is found by adding the measurements or the links of all four sides. So that means that the goal line plus the touch line plus the goal line plus the touch line all added together. Area is found by multiplying the length Comes the width. Let's take a look at question two. Complete the table below for rectangles with the given side links. The first row has been completed for you. It says 10 yards for the length, 150 yards for the width, which makes the perimeter 320. The area is in square yards, 1,500. Now let's talk about how we got these numbers or how they came up with these numbers. They gave us the length, okay? Now you have to remember that we're dealing with a rectangle. So say that this is my length. This is also my length. These are equal to each other. This is my width. This is also my width. Because again, opposite sides are equal to each other. So we know that the length plus the width plus the length plus the width has to be 320 feet. Okay, so if this is 20, that makes this 20, right? So that's 40. Well, all together, I got 320. So let's do 320 minus 40. So these together equal 280. So to find one length, I would divide by two and get 140. All right. 
We have 40 and 40, which is 80. So we'll got 320 minus 80. And remember that these are equal. So we're going to divide by 2. Get 120. So we're going to do 320 minus 120. Because 60 and 60 is 120. Divided by 2 gives me 100. This time we got 80. So I got 320 minus 160 divided by 2 is 80. 320 minus 200 divided by 2 is 60. Three twenty minus two forty divided by two gives me forty here. Three twenty minus two eighty divided by two is twenty. Three twenty minus three hundred divided by two is ten. I want to know, is there any type of relationship between the length and the width here? 10 and 150, 20 and 140, 40 and 120, 60 and 100, 80 and 80. Looks like they're combining to the same amount each time. 160, 160, 160, 160. And continues on. So if I know that the length is L, how would I find the width? 160 minus L. Next, we got to find our area. Now remember on the previous question it asked or it told us that to find the area we're going to take length times width. So they did 10 times 150 was 1,500. So we're going to do 20 times 140, 2,800. 40 times 120, 4,800. 60 times 100, 6,000. 80 times 80, 6,400. 100 times 60, God, that number sounds familiar, 6,000. If you look, these numbers are repeating, but they're opposite. Like my length has now become my width. So 120 times 40 is the same thing as saying 40 times 120, 4,800. Here we have 120, uh, sorry, 140 and 20, which is 20 and 140, 2,800. 50 and 10 was 1,500. And this is going to be L times 160 minus L. Please take a moment to get your chart copied from question number two. Don't forget to finish writing up question number one's answer. On the next slide, you're going to see a debriefing question. So please take a moment to answer your debriefing.